What's up guys, this is Bolash from Racing Brick. This year LEGO was kind enough to send me the full Speed Champions range for review, so I asked you a couple of days ago which should I show you first. As YouTube only allowed me to put 5 items on the list and there are 6 sets to review, I had to group the smaller sets and you voted for those, so I decided to do a combined review with them. So, this is the brand new Koenigsegg Jesko, the Toyota GR Supra and the McLaren Alva. The front of the boxes have the usual Speed Champion style with the car from a similar perspective. On the back you can see, well, the back of the cars, but also the original model and the specific detail of the LEGO build. Interestingly, two of these three sets are brand new licenses at LEGO. I hope this means some goodies for other <coughs> Technic themes as well. Now it's time to open the boxes. I have no information about the official pricing yet, but the sets should be available from LEGO.com from the 1st of June. The contents are pretty similar for each of them, two numbered bags, a separate small bag with the wheel covers, the manual, the sticker sheet and the Supra has a base that's not in the bags. Let's talk a bit about the cars themselves because it's an interesting and quite mixed bag I think. If we follow the numbers, the first one is the Koenigsegg Jesko, a Swedish mid engine hypercar that was introduced in 2019. The LEGO model has actually the exact same design and trim like the one that was on display at the Geneva Motor Show. The second is the Toyota GR Supra, which was also introduced in the same year. This car is a collaboration between Toyota and BMW and it is based on the Z4. Quite different from the Koenigsegg, it's a high performance car but you can actually walk in your local Toyota dealership and order one. The third is the McLaren Alva, yet another limited edition McLaren in their Ultimate series. Introduced in 2020, it is a quite unique looking open top road Liga sports car. So, three very different cars, what about their LEGO incarnations? Do they bring anything new to the table? Well, yes they do. Brand new wheel and wheel covers for the Speed Champions line. Previously we used to see the 18x12 rims with the 24x12 sires on most of the non-off-road Speed Champions cars. Here's the new version in comparison. It's a single piece but made of two different materials, plastic and rubber. I'm not sure if it is the same rubber as the removable one, but unlike regular ABS, you can push it in so it is really a softer rubber material. The external dimensions are actually the same as the old tire. I'm sure there will be some people who don't like this change, but it allows the simulation of low profile tires. Honestly, I don't think it is a big deal, but I'm sure there will be other opinions, so feel free to share them in the comment section. The new wheel comes with a new set of wheel covers. This is the diameter for the old one, and for comparison, this is the new one, as you see, it's much wider. The central hole on the wheel also changed, meaning that a 2x2 dish piece can be mounted on the rim as well. The old wheel cover also fits, but due to the different size it does not fill the rim anymore. Here's how they look on the car compared to each other. I think the new ones look way better on these supercars. Now let's get back to the cars themselves. I didn't do a step by step build breakdown for these three sets because the video would last forever then, but I will definitely highlight the most interesting parts for the build. Let's start again with the lowest set number, this is the Yesco. It had the highest number of stickers out of these three cars, but you won't really recognize it for the first sight, which is a very good sign I think. The overall look of the car is great, and there are many brick build details that I'm happy to see, such as the small blue and yellow accents behind the front wheel, or the lime tip of the front spoiler. They are of course not super proportional, but at least they are there. The part choice for the rear exhaust is brilliant I think, the air scoop fits there perfectly and looks exactly like the real thing. We also get a 1x1 plate with a Yesco print on the side. You need to pay attention during building, although luckily it is used in a fairly early stage. I also like the air intake on the sides, and if we take a look at the cabin, we can appreciate the effort to replicate the rounded dashboard, the seats or the gear shifter, which is a microphone piece by the way. The massive wing is of course thicker than it's supposed to be, but it's a limitation of the brick mostly. Interestingly, if we remove it, then there are some green details at the end of the stickers that are hidden behind these other pieces when they are built in. Once the wing is removed, you can see the transparent pieces that were used to simulate the glass engine cover all the way back. Two interesting details at the front. The nose section of the car is angled and it is held in place with clips, and as you can see that lime central aerodynamic piece is actually replicated with a lime meat cleaver. That is a new color for this piece. It is not the first time we can see this part used in a Speed Champions set, do you remember the other one? Let me know in the comments. So, now a few parts that I don't really like and they are mostly related to the windshield. 
We get a printed piece, but the areas that are supposed to be the same white as the body are very different, so the iconic roof design of the Koenigsegg cars is barely recognizable. The curved windshield is also a trademark that does not get represented here. This black sticker also supposed to be the end of the glass of the side, but it seems to be a totally unrelated black patch on the model. I'm not totally convinced about the rear lights either, maybe a trans red piece could have been better. And one remark about the white stickers, they still don't match the color of the white pieces. Now let's jump to the next car, which is the GR Supra. I have to confess that I'm not a real fan of the original car's look, so apologies for the lack of enthusiasm. The overall proportions of the model seems to be okay, it is a very organic shape, so the recreation at this scale is very challenging. There are some parts that work well, like the bulge above the rear wheel and the ones in front of it. The rear is also fairly recognizable, although we can see that the LEGO version really lacks those curves. Interestingly, the light between the exhaust pipes is a brand new printed piece. Here's another cool detail from the assembly. The section behind the rear axle is connected with this bar with plate pieces and the bricks with studs on the sides. The rear window also has a cool connection. It is an angled piece held in place with these clips, but it seamlessly follows the slopes next to them. Pretty neat. The whole front section is a big snot build, having stud connections both on top and the bottom as well with smooth ties there. This is pretty cool, but unfortunately cannot save the front section, which is simply way too fragmented. I don't blame the designer, because that is the limitation of the material, but it simply does not look very well and the headlight stickers broken down to three separate pieces does not help either. There's a black and red interior for this one, don't really see any references here to the original one. One last remark about the stickers, although it had less than the Yesco, it still felt more challenging to apply, probably because of the headlight stickers and the fact that most of them had to be applied at once at the end. Let's check our third car, the McLaren Alva. The car seems to be pretty chaotic for the first sight with all these edges and curves, but most of them actually come from the original design. The front is I think a pretty correct representation, the designer really did a great job. This model could have been very different before 2017 when the 2x1 wedge piece was introduced. We also have a brick built grille at the front, the flat nose and the bulge before the steering wheel. As you see, there's no windshield, which means no smiling in this car. The crazy shapes of the doors and the side of the car are very cleverly built, I really like this section. The interior is also more detailed than on the other two cars. We get printed seats and a new printed tile that represents a tablet-like instrument that hangs from the center console on the real car. The top rear section is unfortunately too flat. Those big tiles over the rear wheels does not show the organic shapes of the original at all. If we take a look at the rear end of the car, it looks pretty accurate again. One detail that I totally love is the part usage for the rear lights. The X head is a perfect match and looks fantastic. Now let's take a look at the drivers. All of them have custom printed torsos that are very nice, both on the front and the back. Besides the helmets, all of them have their own hair pieces as well. So, here are the three cars side by side. For me, the clear winner among them is the Yesco. That one has the best details and the best overall look. The second one is the McLaren. I'm not really convinced about the real model, but the LEGO version is a pretty good replica and it also has some nice building details. The third one is the Toyota. It also has a few interesting details here and there, but that front section with the headlights ruins it for me. I really want to know your thoughts as well. Please let me know in the comments what is your opinion. Why do you like or don't like these cars? Of course, I'm not finished yet with the Speed Champion sets. Three other builds are lining up here for a detailed review. So please hit that like button if you made it so far, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the upcoming reviews. See you very soon, bye bye!